Hello, I'm Dan Hale. I'm an extension meat specialist with the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. And today I'm going to talk to you about how we determine the value of a beef carcass and how we determine the value of finished market steers and heifers. So these are cattle that have come out of the feed yard. Now there's really two different types of packing plants. There's a little bit of intermingling, but generally we have those packing plants that harvest cattle that come out of a feed yard. We call those fed beef plants. Those are the steers and heifers that have been in a feed yard. They're generally the younger animals in the population of cattle that we have in the U.S. And then we have those uh, packing plants that harvest cull cows and bulls. Those are animals that have outlived their usefulness as breeding animals and then they are then harvested and most of their meats, although there are some steaks and roasts, but most of it is ground beef or lean strips of beef. So example, if uh, you like beef jerky from a, a grocery store, generally that probably came from the rounds of market cull cows and bulls. Nothing wrong with the meat, very safe, just not very tender. Generally those cuts that come out of a feed yard are cuts that are going to uh, our animals that are young, that have been fed a high grain diet for an extended period of time, and they will have very high quality meat. And so those are where we generally get the steaks and roasts that you see in most of the grocery stores uh, you know, throughout the United States. So we're gonna just really focus now on how we determine the value of cattle that come out of those fed beef plants. Those are those cattle that come out of a feed yard, those feed yard steers and heifers, they're harvested in those fed beef plants to produce box beef. And uh, to determine the value, it's important because there's really uh, those market animals that are what we call market ready. Those animals are really sold in two different ways to the packer. From the feed yard to the packer, they're sold either on a live cash basis or they're sold on a carcass grid basis. Now there's some variations of the carcass side, but Right now we're going to focus just on those two methods and use that as we talk about carcass determination or live animal, uh, finished steer and heifer determination, the value of those animals. So, you know, first of all, let's just talk a little bit about the live cash basis. Uh, and so it's different than when we talk about grid marketing. The live cash basis is when they walk into a pen of cattle and they say, I will offer you a certain amount for every hundred pounds of animal that's in this pen. Regardless of quality, there may be some variation from one end in that pen to another. And so as you look at that pen of cattle, you'll say, well, uh, I'm going to offer you this amount for every hundred pounds of live animal that's in this pen. When we talk about a carcass grid basis, then those cattle are harvested and the value is actually determined uh, in the packing plants on each individual animal. So they will come up with a quality grade, yield grade, and uh, some other specifications, and they'll look at that and determine the value of that animal based off of individual quality of that carcass, individual bait value determinations that they do on that individual carcass. So you, live cash basis is generally a pen selling on the live basis, where carcass grid is every individual carcass is assessed a value and they put those together to determine the total value that you receive for that pen of cattle. The first thing and probably most important thing to learn uh, when we talk about carcass value determination is dressing percents. Dressing percents uh, in kind of the broad sense is of the live animal what percent of that live animal ends up in the form of a carcass. In the state of Texas, uh, when we go up into the panhandle, they would tell you that the average dressing percent uh, up there is about 64%. So that means of the live animal, 64% of that animal ends up in the form of a carcass. Uh, and if we look at a national average, USDA quotes an average of 63% dressing percents. So how do you determine that? So this might be a calculation that you'll be asked for on a test in the future, or we'll, we'll do a few examples even within this, uh, and we'll give you a worksheet to work off of this so you know how to do dressing percent. But the, the formula for calculating dressing percents is hot carcass weight divided by live weight times 100. That gets us in that percentage. And generally that number should be in the you know, range between you know, 60 and f cattle that come out of a feed yard, 60% up to 68%. Somewhere in that range generally is what you're going to see in much narrower 
kind of the average would be that 63 to 64%. So of that animal, let's take an example, a thousand pound live steer. If it's produced a 640 pound carcass, then the dressing percent for that particular animal is 64%. If that same thousand pound animal produced a 600 pound carcass, then the dressing percent for that animal would be 60%. So it is the carcass weight divided by the live weight times 100 and that's the formula that you will use when you calculate dressing percent so here we have an example here's a 1350 pound live steer and that steer produced a carcass that weighs 864 pounds okay and when you do the live the carcass weight that now it's hot carcass weight it's the weight just before they start chilling that carcass that's what hot carcass weight is is the weight right at the end of the harvest floor just before they chill the carcass uh, down to the, the, as cold as they possibly can. So the carcass is still warm, or some people would say the term hot carcass. Haven't chilled it yet. That weight divided by the live weight of the animal times 100. So in this case, we would take 864 pound carcass, divide that by 1,350 pound live animal, and come up with 64% dressing percent. Now, the the difference in that is 486 pounds. We call that drop or dress off. So the dress off items or the drop is that those items that are removed from the live animal to the carcass. So as we go from the live animal to the carcass, all those things that come off in that process, that harvesting process, we call drop or dress off because it kind of drops off the animal. And uh, in this case, in that particular animal is 36%. Okay, so that's important to remember. What are some of the drop-off items? Well, the number one and most valuable drop-off item, or the drop or dro dress-off item, is the hide. The hide is about one-ninth of the total value of that animal. And that's going to be used for belts and leather goods and uh, car seats and furniture. The other one is, of course, a big one is the blood loss in the animal when they bleed the animal during the harvest process. Internal organs, because the animal is a ruminant, it has four compartments to its stomach. It has a very large digestive system, and that makes the dressing percent of uh, cattle lower than, for example, a pig. A pig would have a, in the 70% dressing percent because it is a monogastric versus a ruminant. And then you have the head and the hooves and other things that are also removed, and we call that, again, drop or dress-off items. The value of all of those items that come off on the harvest floor Okay, the, the value of those items is called drop credit. Drop credit is the value of all the products that come off during the harvesting process, such as the hide, the digestive system. Remember, that's being sold as a food item. It's cleansed and sanitized, and many other countries will use those organs as a food source. And then also the hooves and the blood and all of that. So that is all part of the drop credit and they will receive a, some small value for each one of those items. And of course the hide, they'll receive a fairly significant uh, value for the hide. Uh, so once those cattle are harvested, they go into a cooler. And in that cooler, they're held generally for about 48 hours. And after the 48 hours, then they start the process of grading those cattle. The beef grading system is a predominant measure uh, that there is used to determine the value of a carcass. So in beef grading, that's being done by the USDA Agricultural Marketing Service. So USDA AMS, Agricultural Marketing Service. Uh, Grader actually is the one that collects that data. Don't confuse that with USDA FSIS. FSIS stands for Food Safety and Inspection Service. Every single animal is inspected, whether it's the old cold cows and bulls or the feed yard steers and heifers. Every single one of those animals is inspected by USDA FSIS by an inspector. Okay, not a grader, by an inspector. Uh, and that's uh, mandatory. Every single animal has to be passed, examined and passed before it can go into the human food chain. On the grading system, the grading is done by USDA Ag Marketing Service, and it is a voluntary system whereby a packer can pay the government to come in and assess grades and be a third party to evaluate carcasses for some value-determinating factors. 
and we call that quality grade and yield grade. When we look at USDA beef grading, okay, the goal there is to take the wide array of cattle that we have in the country. We have 28 million feed yard steers and heifers, and some are Angus, and some are Hereford, and some are Semental and Charlay, and Brahmin, and all the crosses and derivations thereof. There are many different types of cattle. Some are big and muscular, some are shorter, some are fatter, some have more bone, less bone. Because of the variety of cattle we have, it's important to have this grading system in place. And what grading, the predominant purpose of it is to take the wide array of feed yard steers and heifers and break them into smaller groups according to something to do with value. 